Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Dylan Farley. I wanted to give you guys a uh, brief explanation of what to expect from these vlogs. Uh, I am the general manager of Poker Nights Card House. This is a poker club located in Corpus Christi, Texas that is owned by my family. In addition to running the club, I also play uh, professionally. So uh, this vlog will show uh, some of the background stuff that goes uh, into running a poker club so you can see all the things that we do. In addition, I'm also going to take you on the journey of playing live mid-stakes uh, for a living. So I play primarily 5-5 five, five, No Limit. Um, I also play 5-5 five, five, PLO, 5-5 uh, five, five, Congress, which is Big O, Omaha, High Low, five cards, and then also a $5 uh, on the button game of drama hall, which is my personal favorite. Um, so I'm gonna do a lot of be doing a lot of hand breakdowns, kind of going over all that stuff, uh, just showing you basically what it's like to play poker uh, in South Texas and what it's like to run a poker club. So I really appreciate you guys checking out the vlog. I hope you follow me on this journey. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun, and uh, I'm actually getting ready to head to the club now. So um, should have some interesting uh, content for the rest of this vlog. Thanks. Thursday. Every Thursday we have our 5-5 five, five, No Limit Hold'em game. This game really though plays bigger than just about any 5-10 I've played outside of maybe the Uncapped and Encore. Um, <clears throat> that one always plays really, really big. Um, to kind of some background, this game has been going on for, for God, over 10, close to 15 years. Uh, it started off as a home game that we play every Wednesday night and then it sort of just evolved into this. Uh, now that we hold, uh, own the club, we um, started having this game every Thursday night from 7 till 4 a.m. Uh, it's 500 minimum buy-in, no cap. Uh, I buy in for 3K. Most people buy in for uh, between 1,000 to 3,000. I usually start with the most. Um, I just feel like I have a pretty big edge in this game and want to have um, max amount of chips behind me um, for when I finally get a you know good spot. Um, this game plays super loose. There's a lot of straddles, uh, a lot of three betting, a lot of people calling down light. However, tonight, uh, two of our more aggressive players are both out of town. Uh, they're getting replaced with two people that are both fairly aggressive in their own right, but aren't quite as aggressive. Um, so the game will probably play a little bit tighter pre-flop. So I'm definitely looking to three bet a lot more, um, open uh, a lot wider than I usually do. I'm gonna have a pretty, pretty wide range tonight. Um, there's also probably, <laughs> You know three or four people in that game that I really like to play post flop so I plan to three bet against them a lot to isolate so I can um, play against them uh, heads up post flop uh, definitely when I'm in position um, so that probably means I'll be putting the straddle on a lot when I'm on the button we allow a button straddle um, that doesn't have ultimate last action but um, the action will start on the small blind so you get to see everyone else before you um, but you just don't get to act after all the raises and whatnot uh, so yeah, so this is a game that plays really, really big. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I've been on kind of a hot streak in it, so I want to see if I can uh, continue that. Uh, it's about 4 o'clock now. The game starts at 7, so if the one is good, I might jump in, play a little bit. Uh, so possibly could have some hand breakdowns from there, but kind of just depends. I'm not sure if I'm going to jump in. Um, but I definitely will have some hand breakdowns tonight from the 5-5. Five five. Uh, so yeah, see you guys in the <laughs> So I just finished the session, um, you know, didn't go exactly as I wanted it to. Um, kind of a frustrating session. I started off pretty good. Um, at my peak, I think I was up maybe about 900, um, close to 1,000. Um, and then I just got in some weird spots. Um, the story of the night was just a lot of combo draws I would have, uh, straight draw, flush draws, and just bricked out, um, bricked out on a lot of them. And with the way that game plays, um, if you're not making um, at least some of your draws it's hard to be profitable uh, because you're just gonna get called down a lot um, it's hard to get a lot of hands through before showdown so you can you know you can play the appropriate style but a lot of times you're just gonna get uh, you know you're just gonna be in bad shape if you're if your hands aren't coming through um, I also didn't play great I, I'm always the first to admit it I um, should have left it's probably a little bit earlier. I stayed um, the entire course of the game, um, which, you know, the game was perfect. It was exactly what I wanted, perfect lineup and splashing the whole way through. So <laughs> I felt like eventually I was gonna go on a run, but it just didn't happen. Um, I probably should have left 
at about midnight, one o'clock, um, when I was up a good bit, not at my peak, but up a good bit. Um, and I didn't, and I just ruined on a really bad run. Got a couple spots in bomb pots um, that were really bad. We do $25 bomb pots, and um, had one spot where I flopped top two pair and a, a decent draw on the other one, and just ran out to where I got scooped. Um, so a couple, couple of really uh, bad spots that um, definitely caused me to tilt, and some that I've been working on, but I, I definitely tilted and uh, put some money in some spots that I normally wouldn't. Um, so yeah, so ended up losing, uh, 2,200, um, at <laughs> one point I was down, uh, close to like 4,000. So I, um, rallied a good bit, uh, won, won, you know, some money back, uh, which was nice, but wasn't able to get the whole way there. Um, tomorrow we're going to be playing Congress. Um, we do a $5 on the button Congress game, which is big O, it's five card Omaha high low really really like this game feel like I have a good shot to recoup um, most of if not all of my losses from tonight and then Saturday is going to be drama hall um, I'm gonna do a, a video kind of explaining um, what drama hall is for those of you who might not know but it's an awesome game I love the lineup that we have I feel like it's my biggest edge of any game that we play by a mile um, I feel like I'm really far ahead in that game so I always look to <laughs> have that be pretty pretty much my biggest win every week um, so I'll definitely be um, doing a lot of hand breakdowns for that but today I jotted down some notes on some interesting hands um, that I ran across so uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get inside um, grab a drink and um, we'll go over some hand breakdowns from the night all right, see y'all soon. All right, so back with the hand breakdowns. Um, you know, I played from 7 till 4 a.m., so there was a lot of hands. But I wanted to go over the three hands that I found the most interesting um, that I thought you guys would like to hear a breakdown of the most. So the first hand um, is probably like the third or fourth hand of the night, really early into the session. Um, you have some limps around. It uh, gets to me in the hijack, and I look down at two threes. Um, I, this is a game where when people limp and I get a pair in position, I'm usually going to raise so I can take control post-flop. Um, so I make it 25 to go with the threes, button folds, and then small blind um, makes it 90 to go. So some information about this player, uh, I've been playing with him for years, and he likes to play back at me a lot. Uh, we've played a lot of big pots in the past, and um, you know both of us have bluffed the other one a lot out a lot so <clears throat> I'm not really giving him too much credit for having a strong hand because I know he likes to play back at me and likes to make moves against me so um, the limpers fold and it gets back to me and I decide to um, put in the light uh, four bet here and I make it 225 um, looking back at it I don't love my sizing because it it does price in a fair amount of hands um, I probably should have sized up a little bit more, went above 300, uh, but I went with 225, and he tanks, um, and he's doing a lot of weird motions, like when he's tanking, so, but he's someone that I know does that stuff to try to give off, like, false tells, so I'm not really, um, giving it too much attention, uh, it can be anything, so I'm not letting that dictate what I'm putting him on, <clears throat> and he decides to flap, so, when he flats here, um, I think his range is super polarized. I think that he has um, the top of his range for sure. He definitely could have like aces or kings. And I also think that he has a lot of um, uh, like pseudo connectors that he decided to three bet with and then um, felt like he was getting a decent price to see the flop. So, um, but I'm kind of eliminating a lot of hands like um, eights, nines, uh, maybe even tens. Um, and then like ace jack type hands <clears throat> so flop comes king king five with two spades and he checks at this point um you know i have him covered i have like three thousand effectively and he has uh probably about 1200 i think he started with 1500 so he's got probably close to 1200 left and uh he checks and <sighs> i go through all the options on what i can do i ask him how much he has 
and um, he responds pretty quickly so um, and confidently. So again, I'm not too sure what this means. He's someone that can be doing this type of stuff to try to, you know, give off a false tell. Um, but I'm also thinking it's really hard for him to continue if I make a big, big bet without having a king in his hand. And <laughs> I think there's very few kings in his range here. Um, outside of exactly pocket kings and ace king, I don't think he has many other kings. If he has aces, it puts him in like a tough spot um, for a decision. And I think I get him to fold just about every other hand um, and a lot that, that beat me. So I decided to jam and put him to a tough spot. And he tanks for a while and um, finally calls. <coughs> and um, I ask him if he wants to run it twice, and he says, yeah, and um, he has aces. So, yeah, really, really bad spot. He played the hand great and got me in a really bad spot, and I got lucky and hit a three in, um, on one of the runouts. Um, I actually hit on the first one, so looking back, I kind of wish I would have just ran it once because, you know, variance went on my side. Um, you know, I definitely took the high variance line, but I think that's a spot where I'm getting him to fold a lot. Of uh, so next, um, interesting hand that we had, um, it is limped in a couple spots, um, <laughs> and then someone makes it 20 in the dark, and this is like super loose player. So I look down and I have a six of hearts, um, on the button, and I decided this is a good time to three bet, uh, you know, suited ace in position against a uh, blind bet when there's already the dead money out from <laughs> a couple limpers. So I uh, three bet and I make it 60. Um, again, looking back on it, I probably should have sized up more to price out um, the $20 dark bet. I don't really get much information by him calling that because he should be calling much most of his hand. But I do price out a lot of the marginal hands that these limpers could have. <coughs> so one limper calls and uh, the guy that dark bet calls. Uh, some information on the limper that called. He's a uh, older player who um, plays pretty, pretty snug for the most part, um, but gets married to his hands. Uh, he'll, he will call off with no repair for his entire stack on a really um, you know, bad board for overpairs. So um, I liked him getting him. And then the guy that uh, bet in the dark, uh, super aggressive player, and um, you know could have anything. So the flop comes out, uh, king, jack, four, with two hearts. So I flop the nut flush draw. Um, and the older player, uh, the limper, uh, makes it 250 to go into the pot of, like, 190. So he overbets the pot, leaving himself, uh, like, 500 back. Um, the guy that uh, dark bet folds, and it's on me. And I'm in, like, a really weird spot here. I uh, feel like all options are okay. Calling's okay. Um, not great because of his stack size. It's probably my least favorite option. Um, jamming, um, you know, is, is, is obviously fine. Um, you got a lot of equity with the nut flush draw, and you know, it's a spot where <laughs> he could have some hands that um, are aces live and, um, you know, some decent spots. And he also is someone that could just be betting a flush draw in that spot. All this is going through my mind. And then, of course, folding. Uh, he overbet the pot. We just have a flush draw. We have no pair. So, you know, it's a spot where it might be okay to live to see another the day. Um, and the fact that he limped and then called 60 uh, really is like a like a weird move. Um, I think he does have a lot of kings in his range. Um, but I also think he does have a lot of flush draws in his range. So, you guys are going to see over the course of these uh, vlogs that I definitely take the more high variance route in most of these spots. And that's what I did exactly here. I jammed. And uh, he tanked for a while. So at this point, I'm thinking that he probably has, like, a weird king. Like, a uh, not-too-strong king. Because I don't think he's, like, limping with ace-king preflop. Um, or even king-queen. So I'm thinking he has, like, a king-10 or a king-9. And maybe we can get him to lay it down. And if not, you know, we have the equity that we can see with our flush draw and, and ace draw. He eventually calls... And he has king jack, so yeah, not one of the hands I wanted to be up against. And the turn comes, and it's a jack, so he fills up. And the river, of course, brings the heart, but it doesn't matter. He uh, he had already filled up, <clears throat> so I lose like seven hundred <coughs> in that spot. Um, and then, um, and then finally, um, the next hand, uh, way later in the session, 
um, getting a spot where I straddle 10 on the button. Um, as I said earlier in the video, I want to straddle my button a lot in this game because of um, the way it plays preflop. And we have, um, I believe we had one person make it 25 to go. Um, and then the guy who bet in the dark uh, flats and it gets to me on the button. I look down and I have two jacks. So I three bet and make it uh, 135 to go. Um, I sized up, uh, I like the hand, like playing in position, um, but prefer to get a heads up. And the small blind uh, cold calls, um, oddly enough. And the original razor folds and um, the you know the guy that made it uh, 25 uh, that flatted the 25 calls <coughs> and the flop comes king queen I'm sorry queen jack four with the queen jack of clubs so flop middle set uh, small blind checks and the uh, other player has about had about 380 left um, I have everyone covered at this point I have about 3,000 and he jams for the 380. So, um, you know, trying to decide what to do here. I don't want to price in the small blind with a flush draw for, you know, that price. I flat him. So I decide to min raise um, there to, um, you know, get him to. The small blind had uh, about 1,200 at that point. So I felt by min raising, I'm getting him to either fold or play for his whole stack, which is, you know, what I want. Um, so I'm in raise and the small blind instantly shoves over top. Uh, so I snap and we decide we're gonna rent twice. Uh, the small blind had queen jack, which is great. And the, um, other, the smaller stack had nine, seven of clubs. So he has the flush draw. Um, we rent twice and on the first board uh, club comes. Um, so, the small the smaller stack wins uh half the main there and then but i win half the outside and then we run twice again and i fill up so i win i end up winning all the outside and half the main so it's a good size pot so um that was one of the better hands i had um over the night uh so yeah so there's some inter interesting hands um for tonight uh like i said tomorrow will be congress so i'll have some more breakdowns um for um, you know, Omaha high low and uh, see y'all tomorrow